Thank you very much. My name is Otto Tubula, and I'll be making this presentation for the study that was a group study that was done by all the names listed above. Can everyone see my screen? Yes, we can. It's clear. Okay. okay, okay. Thank you very much. So I was making the presentation on the topic dietary patterns and social demographic characteristics of community dwelling adults in Umahia, Nigeria. Um, to just get right in, since I have very short time, the nutrition transition has led to changes in dietary patterns, eating habits, and uh, lifestyles. And uh, this food consumption is undergoing transition. The food consumption that food consumption going on is on undergoing transition from locally produced plant-based staples and less processed foods to convenience food, resulting in non-communicable diseases in low and middle-income countries. Dietary patterns are used to evaluate the complex relationship between the overall diet and disease conditions rather than individualizing the nutrients or the foods. And information regarding dietary patterns and social demographic characteristics as it influences uh, uh, incidence of non-communicable disease as scarce. And so dietary pattern analysis using empirical, empirically driven data, which in this case we are using the principal component analysis is useful for this purpose. Uh, Dietary pattern using the principal component analysis has been used in very in, in so many studies all around the world, but in Nigeria it's scarce. I think this is the first study that has been done on adult population using the principal component analysis. So the objectives of the study was to identify dietary patterns and explore their relationship with social demographics among community dwelling adults in Omaha, Nigeria. And for the materials and method, it was a cross-sectional study that was carried out in urban rural communities of Abia State. Abia State is a state in Nigeria, and the community we, that was used was Umahia. A total number of 868 adults, both men and women, were selected using multi-stage sampling. And apparently healthy adults aged between 20 and 59 years were selected. Dietary intake was assessed using a seven-day qualitative food frequency questionnaire. Dietary patterns were identified by principal component analysis and uh, SPSS was used to, was used as a statistical tool. The results proper. Okay, so the first table, we can see the component factor loadings where the KMO, we have a KMO of 0 0.887 and the Bartlett states of uh, having a p-value of 0.001, thereby showing the suitability of the data for factorial analysis. After the factorial analysis from the table, from the, from the figure, we can see that two, two patterns were, were identified. And these two patterns, these two patterns were named based on the high factor loadings in each food group and from studies that have done, that have been done all over Africa. For the result, we had high factor loadings in starch and tuber. We also had high factor loadings for the first pattern, sorry. We had high factor loadings in starch and tuber, plant proteins, animal proteins, dairy-based uh, beverages, fruits, processed cereals and grains, pastries and soft drinks, vegetable-based soups and sauces, and other vegetables. But there were we had low uh, factor loadings in alcohol. And this... Uh, Traditional, this uh, was, was named traditional because this reflects our culture in Nigeria. Our foods are usually, uh, are usually contain starch and tuber accompanied with uh, a vegetable-based sauce or soup. And then the vegetable sauce is usually mixed with some animal proteins inside and then uh, sometimes mixed with plant proteins. So this is basically what our culture, this is basically what the foods in Nigeria constitutes. And that was why we had to name it traditional. Then for the other pattern, we had high factor loadings for alcohol, processed cereals and grains, pastries and soft drinks. And then it was inverse with uh, dietary based beverages, uh, sorry, yes, dietary based beverages, fruits, uh, vegetable based soups and sauces and other vegetables. And this pattern, it, it reflects the Western foods. It reflects Western food, and so we had to name it convenience because uh, the foods are characterized by uh, easy to produce processed foods, uh, easy to easy to cook, ready to eat processed food that is easily accessible. And so we we termed it convenience pattern. So this this uh, were the way, were the ways we were able to uh, assign names 
to each pattern. After the, sorry, after the, after assigning the patterns, we went further to, uh, to find, to, uh, to relate it with social demographics using the bivariate analysis. And uh, after running the analysis, we found out that there was a relationship between uh, the traditional convenience, the traditional dietary pattern and household size. And we also saw that it was also, there was also uh, an association between uh, sex, age, um, place of residence, the marital status and education, and also income and household size with convenience pattern. After this analysis, we wanted to identify, we wanted to identify the key variables that, uh, that were associated with the patterns. And so we went further to do a multivariate logistic regression. And after doing that, we were able to come up, we were able to, uh, we, we saw that there was, we saw, we, we, for the household size, we saw that households that were above three, uh, individuals or members were less likely to consume traditional pattern. And uh, this, is, uh, this is consistent with a study that, that was done some years back that, uh, that showed that people with, that households that had fewer numbers had better outcomes and uh, that the quality and quantity of food reduces as the household size, as the household number increases. We also uh, attribute, we also feel that that the, re the, the reason why uh, higher numbers, uh, higher members of the house, households with higher number rely on convenience food could also be as a coping strategy whereby they're trying to manage their family resources. And so they opt for convenience food since they are cheaper, readily available and, and uh, those and, and require really nothing. It doesn't require much to prepare and produce, you know, at the time. And then the nutrition transition whereby families are too busy to take time to go prepare meals to eat. Then for this, uh, for the convenience pattern, we saw that there was a relationship between sexually, uh, sex and uh, convenience pattern, whereby females are more likely to consume convenience foods than, than the males. And uh, this... Please, you have two minutes, so you, uh, you help. Okay, okay, thank you very much. And uh, and we uh, we we are attributing this to nutrition transition, just like I said earlier, because uh, nutrition transition has resulted in changes in eating pattern in both males and females and from a younger age. So now there there is no more there was a time there was a time when females were regarded as homely. And so they make out time to prepare, go to the market, prepare, uh, buy food, come back and take time to prepare home cooked meals from, uh, from, from products, plant-based products that is even planted around the surroundings, that's around the home, they plant their, their, their foods and prepare for the home. But now because of nutrition transition, people are too busy. People are too busy trying to survive with the economy and how things have turned out to be. And so, women no longer have time to prepare foods. And so you see, you see women opting for convenience food even more than the men. And also there was also a relationship between age and the uh, convenience pattern whereby middle-aged adults above 40 years are more likely, twice likely, are, are almost twice likely to opt for uh, convenience food than even the younger ones, which is strange. And is someone trying to say something? Yeah, please, can you move to your conclusions for us because you are almost up in time, okay? Okay, okay, thank you. So in conclusion, two dietary patterns were, were identified, traditional and convenience patterns, and uh, the study provided valuable information for the development and maintenance of healthy dietary behavior among adults, and uh, we are, recommending nutrition education focused on social behavior change communication because we are seeing that that nutrition transition transcends beyond just uh, telling people uh, transcend beyond knowledge because people have the knowledge and so we are recommending that social behavior change is what is, is what we need now in Nigeria so that is what we need to develop to improve dietary pattern among adults and then longitudinal studies are, are required to evaluate whether 
whether it really affects the dietary, uh, uh, whether dietary pattern is influenced by social demographic uh, characteristics in the long run. Uh, thank you very much for listening.